Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. In this video, we're gonna talk about setting up lead ads on Facebook, and we're also gonna talk about creating custom audiences based off of how they engage with those lead ads, and also how to get your contacts out of those lead ads into your CRM solution. So we got a lot to cover, let's get into it. So what I recommend doing is going to your Facebook page uh, in order to create your lead form, and then we'll go ahead and connect it to an ad um, after it's been created. So go to your Facebook page. You do need to be in like the business manager part of it. So make sure you're logged in as a business user. And then what you wanna go ahead and do is come up here to more and go to publishing tools. And then you wanna come down here to the bottom left corner for to forms library, open that on up. And here's where you'll see all of your active or all of your created forms that you've created. So anyway, to create a new one, you wanna go ahead and hit create. And more than likely, you wanna go ahead and create a new form. However, you could also duplicate an existing form and then make changes to that existing form. Now, one thing to note about lead forms is once you've published the lead form, like it's set in stone. You can't go back and edit a published lead form. So that's why they give you this duplicate an existing form option because more than likely, you're gonna create a form and then you'll be like, shoot, I wanna change something about this form and you won't be able to. So you're gonna have to duplicate the form and make the changes in that duplicated form and then save that new duplicated form in order to use it for your advertising efforts. So that's one downside of lead forms is when you wanna make sure 100% that you're satisfied with it before you publish it. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and do new form and next. And so probably the first thing you wanna go ahead and do is rename your form so you can keep it organized. So you just come up here and I'll just do demo form. And so there we go, that's easy enough. And then we go through these options here. So we have form type is the first one. So we got two options here, so more volume or higher intent. And my personal preference is to go for more volume. You can always qualify leads after they've already registered or signed up for your email list or whatever to contact you or to schedule a call or whatever else. So my opinion is more volume, the better. Um, higher intent means that they have to do like a review screen, like, yes, I confirm that I want to receive information from this person. And you might have, you know, good quality leads, just be like, oh, this is too many steps, I don't wanna do it. So recommendation is more volume over higher intent, and you can just filter people out um, with further on steps. But get as many people into your system, into your funnel as possible is my recommendation. All right, coming on down here, we have the intro, and just a side note, on the right-hand side here, it shows you what your your form looks like as you're building it. So you can kind of preview how your form's looking and you'll see where stuff goes. So headline, so of course you wanna go ahead and add a headline to your form and we see what that looks like. For the image of our form, we can use the image of our ad. So then that way it's kind of like dynamic. So whatever you use as your ad image will be the image of your form as well. Now, maybe you do wanna create a custom image for this particular form, in which case you could go ahead and create that image and go ahead and upload the image if you want to. So two different options here. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to each, as I'm sure you can kinda figure out in your own mind. All right, coming on down here, we have the layout. So we have a couple options. We have bullets. So it could be bullet one, bullet two, and so on. So pretty self-explanatory. Of course, you wanna use uh, copy that gets people to want to enter their contact information into your form, right? So basically this form is replacing like a squeeze page, right? So, you know, a squeeze page has like a title and, you know, a, a subtitle or subheadline and then maybe a couple bullets and call to action. That's basically what this lead form is. So think of it the same way as like a squeeze page. Uh, you want to get people to want to enter their contact information, right? So you can do bullets. Or you could also do a paragraph and you know write out a paragraph here and so on. So pretty self-explanatory stuff. And again, you can see exactly what it looks like on the right-hand side. Scrolling on down here, we have questions now. So here's where you can go ahead and enter or request different information from your leads. And so there's basically two options here. There's custom questions. So this is where you go ahead and you set up a custom question that you wanna ask your leads. And then there's also pre-fill information. And this is information that people have already entered into Facebook. So Facebook already has their information and it'll automatically pre-fill these fields with that piece of information. For example, like email address and full name, 
you know, Facebook has that information, so it'll pre-fill the form for these individuals. So this can be very handy because it lowers the barrier to entry. Like nobody has to type their name, type their email address, type their phone number. It's already provided. It, Facebook pre-fills it out, so it makes it very easy for people to opt in for whatever it is that you're offering. But let me come back up here to create a custom question so we can check that out real quick. So we have four different options. We have short answer, which is basically, you know, you write your question and they fill in a text box. We have multiple choice, so, you know, A, B, C, D. Uh, we have conditional, so if you wanna get fancy with your questions and create kind of like a, a flow of questions, like if they answer this as this, then show them this question and so on, right? Uh, this is a little complicated though. You do have to create a CSV file and, you know, step it out. So this is a little bit more involved, but, you know, you could get more details and so on. Uh, we go ahead and delete the questions out of there as well. And then there's appointment request. So you could go ahead and have people schedule an appointment with you right here on the lead form. Um, so a lot of different options. And, you know, the more options and the more questions you give to people, the less likely they are to answer all of them, right? So... Typically, again, you know, coming back up here to the form type, we go for volume. We want volume on the front end, and then you you clean people up on the back end with your questions and your emails, and if they're opening things, if they're engaging with things, if they're signing up to buy your products and services, or they're scheduling calls, that's how you filter people. But, but right at the front of your funnel with your ad, you want more volume. You want more people in the system, and you filter them later, so more volume, and then less questions. Because again, the less questions you ask people, the more people will fill out the form, the more people you have in your system, and so on, right? Makes some sense. So I recommend going as low as possible, maybe just going with the email, maybe the first name if that makes sense and you need it, but you know, email's usually pretty good. But if you really did wanna get fancy here, you could go ahead and add different categories so they have different contact fields like phone number, street address, city, state, province, countries, postcode, zip code, etc. Uh, user information, demographic information, work information, national ID number. So if that's something of importance to you, uh, you could go ahead and have that pre-filled out. Uh, so moving on down here, we have privacy policy, and you do need to link out to a privacy policy to run your lead ads with. So, you know, just privacy policy, and then go ahead and throw the link to your privacy policy in this field. And then we have another option to add a custom disclaimer. So if this is relevant to you, maybe you have to have one for GDPR or something like that, you could go ahead and link to it right here. And then we get on down to our thank you screen. So this is like the thank you page that people land on um, after they fill out their, their form, right? So, you know, thanks, you're all set. Your info has been sent to Crazy Eye Marketing. Tap below to visit Crazy Eye Marketing. Or you could go ahead and change your call to action to download or call business. So you could, of course, go ahead and choose what is relevant for whatever lead magnet you're basically offering to people. And of course, you could go ahead and customize this page as well and change your button text if you want to. So download report. And then you could go ahead and link over to the relevant website, or you could go ahead and you know grab your Facebook page, link to your Facebook page, or you know whatever makes sense to you, right? And then we also have the settings tab here, so let's check it out real quick because there's probably an option you want to go ahead and see. So first things first, you choose the language of your form, so English in my case, and then sharing. So this one, the default is restricted. So only people who are delivered your ad directly can submit this form. And you might not want this option. You might want people to be able to share this form with other people. Uh, so you might wanna change it to open. So that's what I usually do with my lead forms is change it to open. So that way if somebody wants to share so share it with somebody or tag somebody in it, I, I don't mind. Like that's free traffic, right? So I don't know why they do it restricted as a default setting, but anyway, something to note uh, under your settings tab. And then we have field IDs, so you could go ahead and customize your field IDs if you want to. And this more has to do with when you're pushing the contact information into your CRM solution. So if you're having trouble pushing this information somewhere, um, it could be because of your field IDs and you might need to come up with like simpler IDs. And then we have tracking parameters. So these are like hidden fields that people don't see when they fill out your form, but when they submit the form, like it prep passes that information to your CRM solution and you could filter them or whatever else. So for example, you could like the, the form name, form name, and you could be like demo form. 
So in this example, I'm passing my form name over to my CRM solution, and then I could go ahead and segment people based off of this form that they filled out and so on. So just an added extra feature if it's helpful to you and keeping things organized. Now, once you've done everything, you filled everything out, what I recommend doing is hitting save instead of finish. So hit save first, because that's gonna save it into draft mode. Because like I said before, once you hit finish, once you publish it, there's no going back and editing it. You have to duplicate it and make changes to the duplicate. So save it first, that puts it in draft mode. Then you can go ahead and close this, okay. And now what you can go ahead and do is come back down to draft forms library. And then you may need to refresh your screen if you don't see it right away, but we can go ahead and click on edit here. And then you can just double check to make sure everything still looks good before you go ahead and you publish your form. So I'm like, yep, everything still looks good on for my, my purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. And I have to enter information here. So please enter your info. And then I'll go ahead and finish. And so now that we have published our lead form, we can go ahead and turn it into an ad. So let's go over to our ads manager. So you can just come up here to the top and go to ads manager. And we wanna go ahead and go to create now. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the start over button here. And now note, I am in the guided creation mode, but you can also be in the quick creation mode. The same concept still applies. Uh, but if you wanna get, if your screen looks different than mine and you wanna get to my screen, like you can switch with this little button in the top corner here. So you can switch to guided creation and now you're in a screen that looks like mine. So here we go from the top. So what we need to go ahead and do for our campaign objective is select lead generation right here. And this is the only um, marketing objective that works with lead ads. So you need to select it if you're creating a lead ad. And I'm gonna go very quickly through this setup. I have other videos that explain the entire setup for your, your Facebook ads and I'll link to those in the description down below. So you can check that out if you want more information. So I'm just gonna go really, really quick, leave like the default information. So I'm gonna hit continue now. And we need to go ahead and select our pages and make sure that you've accepted, accepted the lead ads terms for this page, which I've already done that. Uh, select your audience settings and all that stuff, your placements, all that stuff, your cost controls, your budgets. I'm gonna set this to $1 in case I accidentally publish it and forget to turn it off. Uh, but moving on down here, I'm gonna hit continue now. And now we get into actually designing and setting up our ad. So you can select between a carousel ad or a single image or video ad. So, you know, select what's relevant. Again, I have another video on ad creation, all that stuff. So if you want more information, look at that. It talks about copy, all that type of stuff. So go ahead, configure your ad. So primary text, and then we'll get into headline, and then this description, and then display link. And that's, I think you need to leave that blank actually because you're using a, a lead form. So I'm gonna leave that blank. Call to action, learn more, it's typically a pretty good call to action, but you can play around with them. I don't think they matter that much these days, but you know, the start of buttons, learn more was a good one, but now I think people click buttons just because it's a button. All right, so moving on down here, this is where you get into connecting your, your form. So you wanna make sure that you select the correct form. You could also create a form here. So if you don't wanna go through the, the page creation uh, like we did previously, you could create a form right here or duplicate it and edit it if you need to do something like that. Uh, so just make sure you select the right form. I recommend selecting the appropriate pixels and everything. So that way, if somebody comes through to your website, you can go ahead and track them on your website. And then of course, you just wanna go ahead and confirm and now we get a screen. You successfully submitted your ad. When somebody submits a response to your form, they become a lead to your business. Here's how you can access your lead. So we have two different options here. We could download a CSV file, or we could go ahead and connect to a CRM solution. So I'll quickly show you both of them because they're pretty easy to show you. Well, at least the CSV one is. So the CSV download is back over under your page settings. So again, the form library area. And then you could go ahead and you could download your leads right here. So you hit click download and you'll download a CSV file of all your leads and you could go, you know, call them or upload them to a CRM or whatever you wanna do with your leads. Alternatively, you should see a note up here that talks about connecting your CRM or maybe you could come back over here and come this way to connect your CRM. But anyway, you click this little button here and it walks you through the steps for connecting to your CRM solution. 
So we'll, we'll go with, I got, I use active campaign. So I'm just gonna select active campaign here. And it says that we connect through Zapier. And it says that we'll automatically push leads to your customer system using Facebook's trusted lead ad integration partner, Zapier. Zapier is available to everyone and free for selected usage. So, okay, that sounds cool. Let's go ahead and hit connect. And then it takes us to Zapier here. So we'd have to log in and set this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign into Facebook's lead ads real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit, yep, this sounds good. And yep, this sounds good. And then we can go ahead and select the other options that are relevant here. So we need to go ahead and make sure that we're using the correct page that we wanna go ahead and use. So select the correct page. And then we need to go ahead and select the correct active campaign account in my case. So let me go ahead and select the, my correct account. And now what I actually wanna do is go to advanced mode real quick. So let's do go to advanced mode. And this is gonna pop up Zapier. So let's go into here real quick. And let's open this option up here and let's go to customize lead. And so we have our page, right? So we selected the correct page and then we probably wanna change which form to make sure that you're, you're referencing the correct form or you could leave it set up for all forms, whatever makes sense. But I just wanted to show you these, this option here. So I'll go with demo form and it goes ahead and it pulls in any fields you've gone ahead and created. So if you've created some custom fields or something like that for your form, this is how you like sync those with your CRM. So We'll go ahead and continue now. And then we'll go ahead and we could test trigger and it found some demo or dummy information. So that's good. And now we can go ahead and configure our CRM options as well. So we have active campaign and create slash update contact, then hit continue. Make sure you have your correct active campaign account selected, continue. And now you can go ahead and customize the fields that are being brought over. So you can click into here and you can see what information has passed in to Zapier from Facebook lead ads, from your Facebook lead ad, right? So you can see all this information. So you can see your ad information, your ad name, your raw email and stuff like that. So anything that you've requested from people or that Facebook has provided automatically to you, you can go ahead and push into your CRM solution. Now I'm just gonna leave it blank, but I just wanted to show you, you could click in here and select different options if you want to, right? So pretty cool stuff and you can do a lot of cool stuff, um, you know, passing information into your CRM. I'm just gonna hit continue now and I can go ahead and test and continue. And then I'll go ahead and hit done editing and I'll go ahead and turn on my zap now. And so just like that, I've gone ahead and connected my lead form to my CRM solution. In my case, it's active campaign, but Zapier works with like a thousand different tools. So you could push it to like Google Sheets or Aweber or MailChimp or, you know, hundreds of other CRM solutions. So the the, possibilities are limitless here. And then to close this video out, I wanna to talk to you about custom audiences based off of lead form in interaction. So let's come back to our ads manager. We'll close this out of here now and we'll go into audiences and we can go ahead and create a new audience and it's gonna be a custom audience. And you see the option right here for lead form. So we can go select that option here. And then we have the various options. So meet any or all of the conditions. And then we probably wanna go ahead and select the correct page. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And also go ahead and select the, the form you wanna go ahead and um, create the audience of. So I wanna select my demo form here. And then we have a few different options. So anyone who opened this form in the past 90 days or anyone that opened but didn't submit the form or people who opened and submitted the form. So several different options here. And of course you can create different audiences based off of how they engage with the form and then retarget them uh, for more action later on. For example, maybe people who opened the form and submitted it, maybe now you start showing them the next step, right? The next product or service that they should go ahead and buy or people that open but didn't submit the form, maybe you show them the form again and be like, hey, it looks like you were gonna fill this out, but you didn't. Here it is again, just in case you wanna look at it and so on. So you can get pretty creative here and with your targeting options, but I just wanted to show you real quick how you could go ahead and create a custom audience with how people have engaged with the lead form that you just created. So. That's it for this video. We've gone through quite a bit. We set up our lead form. We created an ad with the lead form. We went ahead and checked how we could download our leads with the CSV file. Also, we checked out how we could push leads into our CRM using Zapier. And then finally, we talked about custom audiences 
based off of how they've interacted with your lead form. So a lot of stuff covered. Hopefully this was helpful. Any sort of like, comment, subscribe is greatly appreciated. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day.